to the channel. I'm Brittany and today we are going to be using my new Presto electric pressure canner. I got this a few days ago for my birthday. It's something that I have been wanting for a long time so I was so excited to get it. We're going to use it for the first time and I'll let you know the ins, the outs, what I've learned, all of that. I have looked through the instruction manual that came with it and it also came with this handy, it's like laminated, um, just quick start guide with just all the basic in instructions on how to use it, what buttons to push, roughly how long it takes for canning. Um, we're gonna be canning up some chicken, some poultry, um, which that needs to can for 90 minutes. So we have all the instructions in here on how to do that. I have canned chicken before, just one other time, just in my regular pressure canner on the stovetop, and it turned out fabulous. So our local store actually sells chicken breasts in bulk in bags. This is a 10 pound bag of chicken breasts. So we actually ended up getting three bags. So we have roughly 30 pounds of chicken breasts that we are going to be canning up. Hopefully we can get it all done today. I know this pressure canner can only fit four to five quarts at one time. Um, so not as much as my large Presto canner that I put on the stove top, but the whole reason for getting this is the ease of it, the being able to set it, walk away, set a timer on my phone and just come back when it's done, pull it out and restart the process. So I'm hoping that I'm not gonna have to be here babysitting it, watching it all day long because we are super busy and always have so much going on. So sitting, standing, waiting for the pressure canner, making sure it's at the right pressure the whole entire time. It's a process. So this is going to be super handy and I'm excited to try it. So I already have 10 pounds of chicken breast here on my cutting board. So first thing what we need to do is we need to go ahead and chop this chicken up into about one inch by one inch cubes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna place these bags back in the fridge, keep them cool until we are ready to use them. I'm gonna wipe the counter just to keep a tidy workplace. All right, let's get to chopping. So we're just gonna cut it into cubes, roughly all about the same size if we can and place it in our bowl. So what the quick start guide states to do is to pull out the removable pot in the canner. So it's similar to like a, um, an Instapot, I guess. It has a pot on the inside. It also came with a rack. You wanna make sure that if you are canning, you always have a rack in the bottom, whether that be an electric canner or a just regular stovetop pressure canner. This will prevent your jars from being in direct contact with the pot, which would cause them to break. So it states to pour three quarts of water into the pot or until you reach the fill line. There is a beveled line on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up with water to that line. Okay, and we're gonna put that back in the canner and you have to put the rack in. The instructions state to, even if you're going to do raw packing, so there's hot packing and raw packing. We are going to do raw packing. Raw packing is when you are taking cold food, not hot, not heated up, putting it into the jars and canning it. This says that I can still do that. I don't have to hot pack. Hot pack would mean this is cooked, this is hot, putting it into hot jars, putting it into the canner. This is stating that I can still raw pack, but I need to go ahead and warm up the jars. 
So to warm up the jars, I need to fill them halfway full with water, place them in the can or on the canning rack, and go ahead and program the canner. It'll take about 20 minutes for the jars to warm up. Then I can take the jars out, dump out the water, raw pack the jars, put on my lids and bands, and then put it back into the canner and then start the actual canning process. So let's fill up all of our jars about halfway with water. So with any canning, you wanna make sure your jars are nice and clean. You wanna make sure the rims of the jars are free of any chips or cracks or anything like that. I'm using a mixture between new jars and old jars that I've picked up from yard sales or neighbors or hand-me-downs. Um, so I'm just using a mixture. All of mine are going to be small mouths, regular mouths. Um, in this canner, if you're using quarts, it can fit five regular mouths. If you're using the wide mouth, which I prefer to use more often than the regular mouth, um, you can only fit four wide mouth quarts in here. So definitely not as much jars that I can fit in this canner as I can my regular stovetop canner, but again, this is supposed to be convenient. So let's see. All right, so we will place the jars into the water. Next, we are going to put the lid on and we are going to lower the latch and put it in the locking position. We are going to plug it in. We are pressure canning. So there's only two options on this. There is pressure can and boiling water can or water canning. So we are pressure canning. So if you're pressure canning, which is the only safe method of preserving meats, um, so they say, uh, we want to make sure that we have it on pressure can. So we will go ahead and select that by just pushing the button in. When we are doing chicken, we want to pressure can quartz without bone for 90 minutes. So let's go ahead and set this for 90. You can just spin this dial here, 90 minutes. It says insert jars, jars are inserted. Okay, so it is warming up. This should take about 20 minutes for it to warm up and then it will beep. And once that happens, we will take out the jars, pour out the water and raw pack our chicken into the jars. Okay, the canner just beeped twice and now it is saying to fill the jars. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock the lid and open her up. Oh, okay, they're not too hot to the touch. They're just lukewarm. So we're gonna pour out the water. I'm gonna do this one jar at a time. Okay, so we have our jar and we are going to add one teaspoon of salt to the bottom of the jar. And then we are going to take our raw chicken and just drop it in. We are not going to be adding any liquid to this because as the chicken cooks, it is going to make its own broth in there. You do not want to add liquid to it because if you add too much, then you'll end up with siphoning, which will not be good because it'll compromise that jar. So we want to not tightly pack it. We want to loose pack. So we're just dropping it in and it wants us to leave one and a quarter inch of head space. So that means that where the chicken is in the jar, we need an inch and a quarter above that. So that's good right there. So we have our first jar. We're going to wipe the rim then we will add a new lid with a ring. Put it on 
finger tight. You don't want to crank the ring on there very, very tight. You just want it to be finger tight. Now we will place this one back into the canner and we will repeat the process for all the other ones. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I have one hand that has raw meat on it and one hand that is clean. Okay. All right, last jar. Put the lid on and the ring. All right, let me clean up real quick. Okay, we have all five jars in the canner. We have all the rings on finger tight. Now we will go ahead and put on our lid. Move it to the locked position. We're gonna put down the knob and twist the green dial into the locked position. So we will go ahead and hit the arrow button. Oh. Okay, so I'm glad I checked the instructions. It wasn't making sense. So you actually remove the regulator. Important, confirm the regulator is not on the cover. Once the proper temperature is reached, the canner will proceed to the vent phase. It'll vent for 10 minutes. When the venting timer will begin counting down, then we will put the regulator on in the canning position. So regulator is off. We will let this get up to pressure and vent for 10 minutes. It will beep and we'll go from there. Okay, so the 10 minutes of venting is finished. Now it says to put the regulator on. So we will put the regulator on, point it towards canning. There we go, a little toasty. All right, we'll press the arrow button and it is set to the 90 minutes needed for canning poultry. We have the regulator set to canning. That should be popping up, there it goes. And now it will start to vent from here. And it is counting down for us 90 minutes. This is what was exciting about this. I could literally walk away and leave it and let it do everything on its own. But I'm going to hang around in the house um, until this load is done just so I can keep an eye on it and make sure everything goes smoothly. But the next two batches that we do, I will actually be able to leave at this time, go and do whatever I need to do around the homestead, and then when it's done, come back in. So we'll check back in with you in 90 minutes. Okay, so it says that it is done. It's been about an hour and a half since it was done canning, processing. And so you can see the dial right here is down. And if I spin this to vent, there's no steam coming out. So let's go ahead and unlock this, lift this up. So you can see there's still some bubbling going on inside the jars, but they are done and fully cooked. So let's go ahead and get a towel to set them on on the counter so that way the cold counter isn't too much for the hot jars. And I am using this old jar puller that my mother-in-law gave me. Absolutely love it. Thank you, Rhonda. So let's pull. So here are our five jars of chicken. 
So now it is time to get load two into the canner. So I am going to go ahead and get the chicken out, get it chopped up, get it put in some more jars and get it in the canner. So to do a consecutive batch of canning, basically all I need to do is dump out this water, put in fresh water and do everything again. I don't have to wait for this to cool down. If I wanted to, I could, but we're just going to start with fresh water. That's cool and start the next batch. So let's do it. Insert jars, they're in there. All right, it's gonna start warming. Now we will go ahead and season this batch of chicken. Okay, so for this batch, we are going to do some lemon pepper seasoning. And I'm gonna season this whole bowl. Um, it'll just make it a little bit more even. So we are going to put in basically one teaspoon per jar. So there are five jars, so there's five teaspoons. So now we're just going to mix this up as best as we can. You could just place this seasoning at the bottom of the jar like we did the salt, and it should circulate in there, but I would rather just add it to the chicken, get a more even coat on all of it. Now we'll just wait for this to finish warming and then we will fill the jars. The pressure canner is finished warming up this batch of jars. So once again, we will dump the water out and fill them with chicken. Each one of these jars averaged out to have about two pounds of chicken in each jar because the package came with 10 pounds, five jars, Split that up, you got about two pounds per jar, which is actually really good. That is plenty to feed a family of four or a family of one with leftovers. is canning chicken, I get to run an errand. Now, please tell me if you have a regular conventional canner, stovetop type, can you leave and run an errand? I think not. So, that's another win, ease, convenience, leave, run a quick errand, come back, and it is literally canning for me at the house. It's awesome. So I'm gonna go drop off some more Lupa Lady packages and get those shipped out, run a quick errand, come back, and it is literally canning for me at the house. It's awesome. channel good morning so yesterday we left off showing pulling the lemon chicken out of the canner what ended up happening is I ran to town to drop off some packages at the post office I also ran a couple errands which turned into Christmas shopping so by the time I got home it was too late to start another batch the second batch of the lemon chicken finished in the canner while I was gone. 
and was here ready, waiting, sitting for me. So I was able to pull them out and set them on the counter and we're good to go. So we are going to get our third batch going in the canner quickly and then we are going to go over the pros, the cons, everything that I like and don't like about this electric canner. So this time I am going to take all of them out and fill them all at the same time. Okay, and I'm also going to use my jar filler. I'm not filling these jars as full, so that way I can get a fifth one. I just wanted to make sure I ended up with five jars, so I just kind of split it evenly between, between them. And to this, we are going to add some pepper, some salt, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. So to each one, we are going to put in a teaspoon of each seasoning. So we are going to do a teaspoon of pepper. We are going to do a teaspoon of salt. We are going to do a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. That's one thing nice about these jars of chicken. You can add your seasoning to it. If you wanted to do like a taco seasoning, you could do a taco seasoning. If you just wanted to do salt, you could do salt. If you didn't want to do anything, you don't have to do anything. It's pretty much up to you. All right, so I have a paper towel here with some vinegar on it. So we are going to wipe the rim of each one, add our lids, finger tight on the jar. Now what's gonna end up happening is as this is cooking, it's going to be boiling. So the juice from the chicken is going to start boiling inside the jars and mixing together. So all the seasoning will distribute through the chicken. Let it start heating up. It will vent, it'll beep. We'll put our regulator on and this load will get finished canning as well. All right, so while that is warming up, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of the canner. So, pros. Just like how it was yesterday, I stuck around for the first batch because I wanted to be here to be able to watch it and know exactly what all the processes were, what the beeps meant, and everything that was going on. Batch number two, I ended up getting it in the canner and running to the post office to drop off some more Lufa Lady packages that needed to get out in the mail as fast as possible. So. I ran to the post office to do that, ran a quick errand because we needed some dog food. So I went to get dog food. Next thing you know, I went to another store because I finished my Christmas shopping. Yay. So that was a bonus. If I were to have been canning on my stovetop, I would not have left the house at all. Because when you are canning with a stovetop canner, you have to be present to make sure that your gauge is in between the right 10 to 11 pounds of pressure and that it doesn't get too hot or it doesn't cool down because if it cools down then you have to start the whole process over again. So I was able to leave in the middle of this canning and then I came back home. I didn't forget about it but I could have pretty much forgot about it and just pulled it out like I did when I ended up getting home. They were completely done, almost cooled off, pulled it out, put them on the counter, and we canned up five more jars of chicken that we can put on our shelf and we can eat it for a quick meal if we're tired from working outside or just, you know, we decide we want to have some chicken tacos or we want to have chicken and rice or some enchiladas or something. It's just ready to go. 
simple, easy, amazing, already pre-cooked, you just have to warm it up. It's another pro, that's the biggest pro, is not having to be here babysitting it. It was amazing. Um, let's see, I, I wrote down a list. Realistically, I could probably get three loads done in one day. If I got up, at least when it comes to chicken. So chicken, beans, takes about 90 minutes. So if I wanted to do the three loads that I did, the two yesterday and the one that's going on right now, I could have gotten those done in one day. It does take quite a while. So you have to get the jars in there. It takes about 20 minutes for the jars to heat up. And then you have to put your food into it and then start it. It does take a while for it to come up to pressure. Then it has to vent for the 10 minutes and then it will can for the 90 minutes. And it does take about an hour and a half to two hours for the little vent to go down and for it to be safe for you to open it. So it is a time process, but it's the same thing with a stovetop canner. You have to wait. There is no rushing canning because that's when you end up with people that have accidents um, and getting burnt or jars exploding, which there are videos and stuff. People, it, it happens. It has happened. It's never happened to me. I've never had a jar explode as I was taking it out of a canner or anything like that. I have had one jar pop while it was canning um, and that happens. Sometimes the jar is has a defect or crack that you can't see and um, it just, it happens. So this one can only hold five quarts. The canner that I have, I think I can fit seven quarts in there. Um, so that I guess would be one drawback if I was wanting to do like as much as I can. My other canner would be something that I could put more in at one time and get more product out. But five jars and I don't have to sit here and babysit it. I mean, it's not really, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, so realistically, realistically, the only con, the only con that I see about this electric pressure canner is the price. They are, they are pricey. They are. Um, I've been wanting one for quite a while, but realistically, I have, I have a canner. So why, why fork over the money for something like this? And what it ended up coming down to was I don't have a whole lot of time. I am busy. We have our homestead, our animals, our garden. We have loofahs that we have to take care of. My kids aren't that young, but I homeschool them. And so we have to get our schooling done, which yeah, most of the time I'm in here when they're doing their homeschool, but a lot of it they can do on their own. And so I end up going out and doing chores while they're in here doing school. So anyways, the reason why it is a great purchase is because you can set it and walk away. So do I think it is worth the money? Granted, I've only, this is my third time using it and I've only canned chicken, um, which can be intimidating. Some people are intimidated by doing chicken. I was too for a little bit, but um, do I think it's worth the money for ease and not having the time to sit here and babysit a regular canner? Yes, I do think that it is worth the money. I'm so excited to have it. Um, it's definitely, for me, it's worth it. So, um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and let this come up to temperature. Let it vent for the 10 minutes. Once it beeps and tells me that it is done, um, I'll put on the regulator and then we'll let it just can can itself away, just do its thing. That is my review of the Presto electric 12 quart pressure canner. I think it is a great purchase. Um, you can do small batches, you can do multiple consecutive batches in a day. You can set it and walk away. 
Um, the only downfall is the fact that it is on the pricier side. So if it's something that you are able to save up for, it's a great asset to, um, to my kitchen tools. Thanks so much for coming along with us today. I hope that I gave you a good insight on how easy it is to use this canner and um, my review on it and the pros and cons. So cheers and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.